I thought we'd take a quick look at comparing two of the models that we just did for the stationary. We're going to compare the naive versus the moving average. We could compare the other two as well, but I think you'll get the gist of it by looking at just two of them and comparing two. So all I've done is I've taken the stuff from the stationary, moved it over, and I got naive metrics in a worksheet and moving average metrics in a worksheet. So under naive metrics, I put the header error, error squared, absolute value of error, absolute value of error divided by y, absolute value of error, y is the actual, the sales, and an error again. Uh, so the metrics we're going to look at, uh, the book talks about four, and then I think I'll talk about another, another couple myself. Um, the error term is, you have to have both a sales and a naive and a forecast so this is the forecast this is the actual so you need both actual and forecast so here because we needed one period to start the forecast we're going to have 19 total error terms that we can look at so it's going to be the actual which is simply B3209 minus the forecast which is 264 or C3 right? and it, it, they can be positive or negative Error squared, I'm going to take what I just found, 55, and square it, which is the caret symbol, shift 6. Absolute value of error equals ABS, is the function for absolute value, and I'll do D3. Absolute value of error divided by the actual, so I take the 55, F3, divide by the actual, which was 209. And then Again, I'm going to do another absolute value, but since I already did it once, I'm not going to point that to that cell. And the error, I'm going to point to this cell over here. And we'll see why I did that in just a second. Now I can take all of these and double click, drag them down, right? To get the error, all the error terms. So let's do the following. Uh, let's make those all centered. So we're interested in um, the book talks about the mean error which is the average of the errors I don't really get into that in the class that much but if you wanted to you could you could do average over all the error terms the issue with this one is it's not that useful um, it is because it's got positives and negatives in it it will cancel things out now this uh, for some reason thought that it wanted me to square it I don't want to do that right here I want to take the average of the so let's get rid of that and then let's do average of the squared errors this is called the mean squared error the MSE so this is the MSE this is the mean error and then this guy is probably going to be wrong yep this is the book calls this mean absolute error almost everywhere else you see it's actually mean absolute deviation where deviation is just another word for error error uh, and so here we're going to take the average over those absolute values of the error terms right. and then the problem with MSE and MAD is they are scale dependent so depending on what we measure, it's hard to look at different forecasts for different types of objects. So the whole idea with the next one called MAPE, mean absolute percent error, is to normalize it to whatever it was, right? So in our first forecast for our first error here, we had a 26% error rate. Right? And down here we had a 25%, 7%. So if I take the average of these the book says to multiply them by 100 I don't do that instead what I do is I, I select this and I choose percentage and I let Excel do the formatting for me instead of actually doing another calculation so our MAPE is 17.2 percent so our forecast is off 17 percent on average uh, not great but maybe okay uh, and then the, the one one the book does not talk about is largest absolute deviation. 
So here I want to find the maximum of my absolute deviations or absolute errors. 94. I was off by 94 TV sets is what we were trying to predict, right? Um, that's good for setting a threshold is really what that's good for. And then another one that sometimes comes in useful is a cumulative forecast error. So now we're, we are going to add up all of the errors that are positive and negative, so they will cancel, cancel out. The, generally, the closer to zero, we tend to think it's better, but we'll see where that may not be a good indication of it later on. So negative three um, seems okay, right? How good are these? Again, we don't know because we need to compare it against another forecasting method. So let's compare it to the moving average metrics, all right? Which I have here. Uh, so again, we can't do much with the first three. We need a fork. We need the actual and the forecast. So the error again is actual minus forecast. Then we want the error squared. Then we want the absolute value, ABS, of the error. Then we want the absolute value of the error divided by the actual. And then we want absolute value again to do the LAD. And then the error to do the cumulative error forecast. And then I'm going to center all those, copy them down. And again, uh, this is going to be the mean error, the mean squared error, the MAD, the MAPE, the LAD, largest absolute deviation, and the cumulative forecast error. So here it's going to be the average of, notice this time we have fewer data points that go into that average. So the mean error is 0.39, the mean squared error is 12.26 mean absolute deviation All right mean just means average uh, 28.43 TV sets and here I want the average of these guys All right. and again these guys I'm going to make percentage down to 11.85 percent before we had 17.2. Uh, LAD is the max of the absolute deviations, uh, 81 before it was 94, so that's good. And then cumulative, I'm adding up all of the error terms. And again, something close to zero is would be nice. It actually is bigger than what it was before, but uh, I'm not too concerned about that. So the most intuitive one is the MAPE. That's the one that I would look at first. I would say, okay, naive metrics. Uh, the naive produced 17.2% errors on average, right? And over here, got 11.85. Then I'd also look at the MSE, so 12.26 for moving average, 25.25, so double, right, for the MSE. Uh, the MAD is 41 here for naive and 28. So on these, these four right here, the ones that are, are primarily the important ones, we see that moving average is far outperforming the naive method, right? which shouldn't surprise us, right? The naive is very naive. So those are metrics for determining which forecast methodology is better than another one. After this, we'll get into some other forecasting techniques.